to subscribe! Living in a noisy house is unpleasant. Let's learn about noise pollution at home. Make your friends be quiet. <laughs> Don't use the hammer at night. <laughs> Don't let the dog bark so loud. <laughs> Don't play with the ball inside the house. <laughs> Don't make loud noises when you play. <laughs> Don't jump on the couch. <laughs> Don't play music at night. Good job. Always be careful for your neighbors. Lay soundproof mats on the floor. Floor is quiet. Look for objects that reduce noise. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! With headphones, you can quietly listen to music. With slippers, you can walk around quietly. <laughs> With chair leg covers, the chairs won't make so much noise. <laughs> Amazing! You found all the objects that reduce noise. <laughs> be thoughtful about your neighbors and don't be noisy. Always remember, noise pollution manners. Krong ran away with a toy. Find the hiding Krong. The hiding objects. Finish coloring the picture. together with his friends. Playing together is so much more fun! Gather all the red apples.
know. They've gathered all the magical apples. The friends all shared and enjoyed eating the apples together. Match the puzzle. Finish coloring the picture. Find the hiding objects. Finish coloring the picture. As Krong and Rody carried in the heavy bread baskets, Bordo exclaimed, You guys are the real superheroes! Prince Eddie has come from Robot Land. Tongtong has come from Dragon Land. Prince Poby has come from Bear Land. Krong has come from Dinosaur Land.
Totoro has come from Penguin Land. What fun stories about princes from faraway lands? What was the most interesting object? The friends have come to help Hobi. Tap on Poby to make him fart. Bordo <coughs> 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 helped Poby by catching his fall with the airplane. Toby landed safely back on land thanks to his friends. The friends all sighed with relief. Move to the tree without waking up the others. <laughs> the presents under the tree.
The next morning, the friends were so happy to receive presents. Seeing how happy his friends were, Eddie couldn't help but smile. Build Doodoo a new house. Decorate the house. Match the puzzle. Dudu has a new home. Dudu felt so grateful to his friends. Today, Petty the Little Red Riding Hood needed to go on an errand. Take this pie to Grandma. Don't go wandering off. Yes, Mother. While Petty was walking through the forest, a wolf emerged out of the shadows. Hi, I'm Bororo. Where are you going? I'm Petty. I'm on my way to Grandma's house for an errand. Where is your grandmother's house? It's at the end of the forest. Hearing this, Bororo suggested something. There is a beautiful flower bed over there. How about picking some flowers for her? Really? Great! Feeling excited, Petty ran towards the flowers. While Petty was busy, Bororo rushed to Petty's grandmother's house. Grandma! I'm Petty! I'm here on an errand! Oh! My darling Petty! Oh no! The grandmother opened the door for the wolf! <laughs> I'm actually a hungry wolf! Roar! A few moments later, Petty arrived at the house with the flowers. Grandma, I'm here. Oh my dear, come closer. Petty thought her grandma looked strange, so she asked, Grandma, why are your ears so big? The better to hear you with, my dear. Then why are your arms so long? The harder to hug you with, my dear. Petty thought this person didn't feel like her grandmother. At that moment, she heard a familiar voice. Run away, Petty! 
Kati realized that it was actually the wolf standing in front of her. Petty was scared, but she had to save her grandmother. Then a good idea came to mind. Grandma, I baked you a pie. Thank you, dear. But as soon as Bororo ate the pie, his face turned red. Petty had secretly added hot peppers into the pie. Ah, water! Water! While Bororo rushed to find some water, Petty opened the cage and saved her grandmother. Did you think you'd get away with this? Being furious, Bororo stomped towards Petty. Help! Luckily, Chrome the Huntsman was passing by and heard their scream. Bad wolf, don't move! <laughs> Thanks to the huntsman, the lion wolf was locked up in the cage. From then on, it was safe for Petty to go alone on her errands. Cinderella Petty had lost her parents when she was young, so she was living with her stepfamily. Uh, I'm so miserable. <laughs> I can't wait for the party. Let's go, girls. <laughs> Petty's stepsisters left for the ball, leaving <laughs> Petty to do all the housework. <laughs> I want to go too. Suddenly, with a burst of light, a fairy appeared. I've come to help you, Petty. The fairy waved her hand and finished all the cleaning and the laundry. Wow! This is amazing! Now I'll send you off to the ball. The fairy changed a pumpkin into a carriage and a mouse into a horse. Petty also got a beautiful dress. This is beautiful! You must remember, you have to come home before the clock strikes 12. Petty made her promise to the fairy and rode the carriage to the castle. When Petty arrived at the ball, everyone was surprised. Oh my! I've never seen anyone so beautiful! Beautiful lady, may I have this dance? Sure! Petty and the prince danced together happily. Just then, the clock struck twelve. Petty remembered her promise to the fairy and ran out of the castle. Running in a hurry, Petty fell down and lost one of her shoes. Running after Petty, the prince picked it up. My lady! By the time Petty returned home, the spell had lost its magic. She was back in her old clothes and old shoes. I wish I had more time. But the next day, the prince and his assistant came to Petty's house. The prince had been visiting all the homes to find the owner of the shoe.
Petty stepsisters greedily tried on the shoe, but it didn't fit them. Ow, my foot hurts, Krong. Hmm, I don't think this is your shoe. Just then, Petty came out holding the other shoe. Bororo recognized her at once. My beautiful lady! My name is Cinderella Petty. Cinderella, will you marry me? Yes, Prince Bororo. So Prince Bororo and Petty got married and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there was a miller who passed down his possessions to his three sons. He left the mill to his eldest, the donkey to his second son, and the cat to his youngest son. The youngest Poby was poor, but a kind man. So he gave the last of his bread to the cat. The cat responded to Poby. Thank you, master. If you get me a pair of boots, a hat, and a bag, I'll make it up to you. Poby was surprised that the cat could talk, but still gave him everything he asked for. The next day, the Puss in Boots went to the forest and brought back a rabbit. Then he took the rabbit to the castle where King Harry lived. Your Majesty, my Master Lord Carabas sends you this rabbit as a gift. I see! After that, the cat continued to bring gifts to the king in his master's name. One day, King Harry was crossing a bridge while riding his carriage. Master, hurry! Take off your clothes and jump in the river! Huh? Okay. Then the cat shouted towards the king's carriage. Help us! Lord Carapace has fallen into the water! King Harry's men held Poby safely out of the water. What awful thieves! They stole all my master's clothing! Listening to the cat's story, King Harry lent some of his clothes to Poby. At that moment, Princess Loopy saw Poby in the royal clothing and fell in love with him. King Harry decided to take Poby back to his home on his carriage. The Puss in Boots quickly went to the land where a cruel ogre ruled and said to Petty the farmer, If you say this land belongs to Lord Carabas, I will chase away the org. After a while, the king's carriage arrived. Whose land is this? It belongs to Lord Carabas. Hearing the farmer's words, King Harry liked Poby even more. Meanwhile, the cat entered the ogre's castle. I have come after hearing about your greatness. Could I see your magical transformation? The ogre turned himself into a dragon. Roar! What do you think? What greatness! Can you even turn into a small mouse? Of course I can! The ogre turned into a small mouse. Then the cat quickly picked up the mouse and swallowed it. When the carriage arrived, 
The cat opened the gate and announced to the king and his men, Welcome to Lord Carabas's castle! Toby really had become Lord Carabas, and later on even got married to Princess Lee. Together, the Puss in Boots and his master lived happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs>